I was inspired to go into medicine, actually, by a woman called Dame Cicely Saunders, uh, who founded the hospice movement, or one of the founders of the hospice movement, and she came to speak to me at my school. I moved back and settled in Wiltshire, uh, and she came to speak at St. John's Comprehensive, where I was at school. Uh, and she had this wonderful phrase. She showed us lots of, or told us lots of stories of patients in the last few months of their lives getting a hell of a lot uh, out of uh, their palliative care. You know, some, some of them were drawing great pictures, they were making works of art, they were singing, they were creative, but they had really good, decent, dignified deaths. And she said this very simple line, she said, the joy of being human is to be humane. And that sort of struck a chord with me. It sort of inspired me slightly more than we're all slowly returning to room temperature, which didn't really do it for me. But it sort of cemented in my mind that at the heart of everything we do is humanity. The reason I can't connect at all with Andrew Lansley, or in fact a lot of management speak, is that it doesn't speak the language of compassion. It speaks the language of competition, it speaks management stuff. But actually, to unite the health system, everyone is united around humanity and compassion. Once you have that particular attitude in place, then quality and safety seem to follow. I think that's really, really important. And that's why, I, you know, people have said the health bill has, has alienated everyone in England because people don't understand the narrative and the story. And the reason they don't is because politicians aren't speaking the language of compassion and humanity, which is what's needed. Clearly, we're going to have the health bill is gonna, has been passed in England, but then we've got the Mid-Staffords inquiry that's coming hot on the heels. And to me, that's absolutely fascinating, again, in terms of quality improvement, because if you read the Mid-Staff's first report, this fascinates me. In the same hospital in Mid Staffordshire, at the same time, sometimes on the same ward, there are patient stories of patients having brilliant care and patients having diabolical care. So it's clearly not just a resource issue. It's amazing. There are wonderful, wonderful episodes of care alongside absolutely diabolical episodes of care. And the single most important thing, people said, it came down to the individual attitudes and compassion of the nurse or the doctor who was treating them. Patients say, as soon as such and such a nurse came on, I knew everything was going to be okay. As soon as such and such a person came on, I knew it wasn't going to be okay. So actually, most of what we do is an attitude of mind. It's doing stuff within our sphere of influence. Yes, it needs leaders. It needs uh, senior nurses on wards who are motivated and inspiring and challenging uh, the nursing staff to say, what is your care plan for this patient today? How do you know that you've achieved it? What are your aims? So you're always having to, to think about and articulate what you're aiming to do with the patient. But ultimately, it comes down to the quality of that human interaction that you have with patients. It come back again to me, to my slight obsession because of what happened to my dad with, with mental health issues. I have this theory that the way to save the NHS actually is to start with the mental health of the staff working in there. Because I don't believe that any nurse would go to work or any doctor would go to work to do a truly diabolical job. There are extreme uh, psychotic examples we've had. But generally, there's, there's clearly a huge cultural issue there. Uh, and, and again, the problem with extreme rapid change uh, is that it mucks plays with people's heads. They can't get their head around it, they feel destabilized, they feel burnt out, they have job insecurity, they don't focus on patients. So actually you need stability, but you need compassion. Um, Henry Ford, who was the maker of Ford cars, used to say that uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So you can have this fantastic strategy, this fantastic reform program, you think it's gonna be fine, but if the culture of your organization is sick to the core, because people are burnt out or they're dissatisfied or they're mumbling or whatever, then it ain't gonna be implemented. So actually getting the culture of an organization is absolutely fundamental.